Hi, this is Justin from Ajar Productions. In this video, I want to give you a sneak peek at the fixed position element widget. So let's jump right in. Take a look at these items on the left, this menu, and watch as I use my scroll wheel to scroll. They stay in the exact same place. Now this content on the right is actually a page. It is not a scrolling frame on its own. It's a page, it could even be multiple pages. And now look at this item in the bottom right that pops up. There is a jump to top item. You see when I click that it goes away. It only shows up after I've scrolled down a bit. Okay, so both of these items are part of the feature. Let's jump into InDesign and I'll show you how this is created. Here's the document InDesign and I'm just gonna go up to the In5 menu and down to interactive widgets and down to this fixed position element. Now when I select this item you can see the settings that I have applied. First of all I've enabled the fixed positioning. That means that this element is going to be essentially taken out of the document flow and it's going to be positioned in the window. Let's go through these settings one by one. First it's using desktop scaling. Let's go back to the web version and see what that means. So even though this item on the left is taken out of the flow of the document, it has proportional scaling just like the document. So it scales with it and it stays exactly in the position from the InDesign document that you would expect it to and it stays fixed in that top left corner. The other options for scaling are to not scale at all or stretch to fit. We'll look at stretch to fit in the next example. The next setting determines where this fixed item gets shown. So this one is shown for the whole document, but we can show it for just a layout, and we'll see that in the next example, which is responsive, or we can show it just when a single page is on screen. Next, there's a pin position for this. This one is pretty straightforward. It's in the top left corner of the document. So I've set it to the top and left in terms of pinning. Now I can pin it to the bottom right or any variation of that. And what N5 does is take the position relative to that space. So if you look at the item on the left, it's 122 pixels from the left. N5 uses that as the position on screen. Same thing if I do it from the right, then it will use the distance from the right edge of this item from the right edge of the page. Now if I happen to choose center for either the X or the Y, it just positions it in the center. It doesn't care about where it is on the InDesign page. Now to take a look at the scroll triggering, let's go down to this other item that is fixed in this document. For this one, I've got scroll triggering turned on and I've got it set to show when it reaches 800 pixels from the top. So I'm assuming this is kind of scrolled a bit at 800 pixels and that's when it show up, but I could make it any value. And if there's no scrolling in the document, this will never get triggered and never show up. So it's really smart and that you don't have to think about too much where it's placed. You can also selectively hide things. We'll take a look at that in the next example. And next you can add an action. So these are common actions that might come up in using a fixed position element that aren't available in the buttons actions in the buttons and forms panel. So I've added scroll to top and scroll to bottom. This one has scroll to top applied. There's also an option to not reset on page change. Now this is relevant if you want to have audio or video on screen playing all the time as the pages change without being interrupted. Or if you have a multi-state object and you don't want it to go back to the first state, which is the typical behavior of a multi-state object when the page changes. All right, so that's how I set up these items in the first document. Now let's take a look at the second document. Back in the browser, I have a menu at the top here. I just built this with the menu builder. When I scroll down, you can see it changes a bit. So now it has this bar here and it just stays fixed to the top. And this is a, a working menu. And now if I were to shrink this, you'll see that there is a responsive version. So the menu that we saw, that top menu, was set to only show on that wider layout, and now in the smaller layout, we've got a hamburger menu, and that hamburger menu is also fixed in this case. And I'm only using this, this format with the page borders just to show you that this is uh, centered, separate and apart from the page content. You can also set this to have the borderless version where this looks like a website and we can scale it to the width and that way it'll look a lot more like a website. But I left it this way just so you can see uh, precisely how this is working. Let's take a look at the InDesign document. So here's my fixed item. I actually have two fixed items. So there's a couple different ways that I could do this. I could have two different menus. I chose to just have one menu that is fixed. Uh, that's this, this one here. I set this to not scale and to show only for this layout and then it's centered horizontally but fixed to the top. There's no other actions or anything on this and then this background 
I set to stretch to fill, so that's where that comes in. Whenever you use this option, and N5 can tell that you've either filled the width and or the height of the page, it will uh, just set that to 100%. So that's really good for simple rectangles that don't have complex content, that you just want to fill the screen, uh, but not scale proportionally, right? Because if we did that, when we're scaling the width, it could also scale the height. This way, it only scales the width, and it keeps it matching this non-scaling content. I set this to be uh, fixed to the top and left, and I set this to show about 40 pixels from the top because that is about the height of this. So that's kind of that effect that you've seen in web pages where you scroll down and the menu changes. And we could change this to anything. This is just an example. And then I built a separate layout. I use this, I'll describe this in another video, but I used the Magic Layout Builder, which is new, and created this separate layout. And then I used the Menu Builder to just build a menu. Didn't do any extra work, but I did make it fixed with no scaling and told this one only to show for this layout. And this is the result. We've got essentially two different menus for this layout and a menu for this smaller layout. So that is a sneak peek at the fixed position element widget. And I think it's incredibly powerful. I'm looking forward to giving you a chance to play around with it. Thanks so much for watching this video.